This podcast is brought to you by Blackbee Ministries International. To find out more, visit blackbee.org. Well, welcome back to the Richard Blackbee Leadership Podcast. If you're new around here, my name is Sam, and I'm joined by Dr. Richard Blackaby. Good to be with you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It is New Year's Eve as this will be filling your inboxes. Uh, and we uh, just... And we expect speech. that no one's going to head off to a New Year's Eve party until they first have listened to the podcast. Absolutely. Yep. Of course. Uh, that goes without saying, but we'll <laughs> say it anyways. Uh, well, we hope you all had a fantastic Christmas yeah. with family and friends. Uh, hopefully, you've, you've been able to get some rest. I'm sure you've eaten well, mm. uh, no doubt, but uh, but we're facing nope. down a brand new year, a brand new decade, in fact. That's right. Year 2020. 2020. Man. Ooh, that time, just sounds funny to even say it. Yeah. Time has really flown. Uh, especially becoming a new dad this year. Uh, you My know, grandkids well, and your kids are going to say, "Did you you were alive when it was 19-something? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So uh, what do you have for us today as we look at 2020 right in the face? Sam, we've talked a lot about reflecting and evaluating and being purposeful and intentional. Yeah. And certainly uh, you you can do that every day of the year, but... New Year's Eve is always a great time to reflect because you have the entire year in review now and a brand new year just waiting uh, for you to try it out and step into it. Kind of like a brand new car. Mm. You look at that brand new car. It's got that new car smell. Yeah, and 2020 (laughs) has that new car smell. (laughs) A lot of times, though, people approach the new year and their thoughts are primarily things like, Man, my iPhone is another year old. Now I've got. Yeah, I'm getting get, way out of date updated. here. I'm still on an iPhone seven. I've got to get. I've got to upgrade. Uh, or they're thinking about who's going to win a bowl game or who's going to win the Super Bowl. Uh, but there's a lot more I think that should be weighing upon us than just those kind of things. Mm. And uh, so I think that when you get to the beginning of a new year. Uh, I, I think every person ought to desire that this new year ought to be in many ways the best year I've ever had yet. Mm. Best year of my walk with God, best year of my marriage, best year of my parenting, best years in maybe my physical fitness. I, I may be a year older, but it, at my stage of life, at least, am I in the best shape I've been uh, emotionally, spiritually, physically? And for it to be the best year, it means you have to change some things. And mm-hmm. so, uh, and I think one of those areas particularly is, uh, changing not your circumstances, but changing yourself. Hmm. And, and I imagine you've got a, a scripture for this to I do. How, how we might change ourselves. I think a great scripture just to always keep in front of you is, uh, second Corinthians five verse 17. Paul says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, old things, have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I like that because uh, basically Paul, and of course Paul was very uh, uh, invested in this truth because he'd been a self-righteous, murderous, prideful, egotistical Pharisee. And he definitely wanted old things to pass away. He did not want to be that person anymore. He was appalled Mm. at who he had been for much of the early part of his life. And he found great uh, joy in the fact that he could become a new person, that uh, he he was not uh, consigned uh, to somehow be imprisoned his whole life to being prideful, arrogant, um, vengeful kind of person. Yeah but that he could actually be transformed right to the very root of his being. Uh, and, uh, and, and I think that that truth needs to always be kept before each of us to say, by the power of the gospel, by the power of the Holy Spirit living inside a believer, you can be transformed. You don't have to remain the same person that you've always been. And, uh, and so I think whenever you look at a brand new year, you have to look back first and say, were there some things about who I was in this year that's passing that was disappointing? Uh, some of the ways I acted, some of the ways I treated other people, some of the ways I just conducted my, my own life that 
really, I know I, that with God's help, I could do better. Hmm. And, and so how do I need to change so that this new year ahead of me is hands down the best year I've ever had? Yeah, well, and I think uh, a lot of people may be, may be thinking that, uh, you know, can people really change or are yeah. they just coping with, you know, who they really are? Well, you know, that, that is a great question because uh, sometimes you see people that claim to be Christians and, and maybe for even a time they have checked their more sinful habits or tendencies and mm-hmm. they've got them not so much. And you think sometimes, did they really change or were they just on their best behavior? Even movements like uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, it's it's a uh, an organization that's helped many people uh, get off of alcohol addiction. But even they would say, "Well, you're always an addict. You're even after years of AA, even after years of not taking a drink, you're yeah. still an alcoholic. You just have to build a lot of accountability features into your life to prevent you from expressing." who you really are in a sense. Hmm. Uh, it, it, it doesn't necessarily teach you that you can change and d- not be an alcoholic anymore. Uh, and I think that's the message of the gospel is that yeah. you don't just have to police yourself and try better to have show more self-control in the future. For instance, if you're a prideful person and you're always going around bragging about yourself and your team and your car and your money and your possessions and you become unbearable to be around <laughs> at Christmas parties because people just know they're going to be subjected to a brag fest. And you begin to realize, boy, I'm turning off a lot of people when I brag that way. I, I better kind of tone it down a bit. Uh, well, you, you're still a prideful person. You're just realizing that it doesn't always, it's not always in your best interest yeah. to express that pride. So you keep it under wraps. But but in your heart, you're just as egotistical as you've ever been. Yeah. But the message of the gospel is, uh, you, no, you don't just have to try to control all those sinful tendencies. You can actually be set free where you actually become a humble person, where you don't think about yourself all the time anymore, where you're not comparing yourself anymore, where you're actually overwhelmed by the grace of God that he would ever forgive such an abject sinner as you. And every day you're grateful for the fact that God has given you a chance by his grace to become like Jesus. And every time any of those sinful tendencies creep into your life, it shames you that you have fallen still so short of Jesus. And in your humility, you ask God for grace to help you move further toward Christ likeness. And there's a sense in which maybe you're not perfect yet, but at your fundamental root of who you are, you've changed. And so that's the kind of change I'm talking about uh, when we talk about looking at the new year to say, uh, some of that process obviously still needs to continue in my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so as I look at how I acted last year, as I look at the way I related to other people, as as I look at the way I related to God, What still needs to fundamentally change in me? Otherwise, and that's, of course, the difference between a New Year's resolution and Christ making you someone new. Uh, A New Year's resolution, the reason that they're so so much of a joke is that all we're trying, we're we're fundamentally the very same people that like to eat too much and and we we have these bad habits and we love to um, basically accommodate all of our fleshly desires. But at the end of every year, when we've had to pay the price for all that, we try vainly to say, I'll try a little harder next year to exercise more, eat less, whatever. And that lasts maybe a month. And But since we're still fundamentally the same person, we inevitably slide back into the same kind of behavior. Mm. And yet this verse and other uh, truths of the gospel say... No, what you need is a fundamental change in who you are. And when you change who you are, then you change what you do. If you've ever wanted to do the Experiencing God Bible study, this is your chance. Registration is now open for the Experiencing God online class. In addition to all the material from the original study, class participants will gain access to archived footage of Henry Blackaby, group discussions with students from around the world, a live stream Q&A with the Blackabys, and more. 
Class begins January 13th. Register using the link in the show notes or visit blackabee.org slash online classes. If you like what we're doing and would like to support our work, please consider making a donation. Even a little bit will go a long way toward keeping this podcast going for the months and years to come. To support this podcast, click on the link in the show notes. We are truly grateful for our wonderful community of listeners. Well, Richard, from talking with you in the past, uh, I know you have a real uh, unique approach to the new year. Uh, I know you have a way that you like to to approach a new year. Uh, can you maybe share some with that uh, of that with us today? Yeah. Well, one thing: take some time over the holidays when you maybe are off work and you have a little more time at home. Set aside at least a morning, maybe get up a little earlier one day and just take some time. First of all, get a sheet of paper, get a get your Bible out, and on a sheet of paper. Take some moments to reflect back on the highlights, the things that stood out to you uh, about the year in review, and ask the Holy Spirit to help bring to your remembrance those things that are most important. And some of the things, you you may want to look at, uh, what what was I really excited about? What did God do in my life in the year past? Uh, Maybe God initiated some new things in my life that had never been there before. Uh, maybe God gave me more patience with my kids than I'd had in previous years. And I'm really excited about that. I haven't arrived yet, but I feel like God is building some things in my life that weren't there before. Mm. Uh, maybe there's some new habits. Maybe I started getting up earlier to pray and to spend time with God. And, uh, it's maybe just 15 minutes earlier than I used to, but that 15 minutes has added up over the course of a year to a lot more time with God. And I'm really excited about that. And so highlight the activity of God. And oftentimes what God begins in a year, that's not the end yet. That's just the beginning. Right. And so say, so God, what you started in this year that's ending, what is it? You Where do you want to take that this next year? Maybe I, I, I'm going to start getting up 30 minutes earlier than I used to. Uh, maybe I'm going to, there's some new practical ways to, sh- to be more patient with my family or my uh, colleagues at work. Uh, and then then secondly, I think you also want to look and say, what, what, what disappointed me? What were the disappointments? And of course, that's a harder thing to do. It's not pleasant necessarily mm-hmm. uh, to realize I snapped at my wife or my husband or my kids, my uh, colleagues at work. Boy, I, I just have a short fuse still after all these years of being a Christian. I, things, I get in a bad mood. I take my bad mood to work. I take it home to my family. Uh, they deserve better than that. I, I've, I've walked with God long enough that that just has to change. I, I don't know, Lord, help me understand where that's even coming from. Why am I so frustrated with people? Why do I lose mm. my patience so easily? Yeah. Why am I not more laid back and chilled and just going with the flow of what is happening in life at the time? Uh, you know, Benjamin Franklin was not a Christian, certainly in the sense we would uh, think of, but, uh, he was a deist, uh, but he did, uh, and of course, so what he did was a, a lot of, of more of a, just a humanistic sort of approach, but, but every year he would uh, take time to think about various virtues and he would ask himself, what virtues would I like to see more in my life? And he might pick one, courage or uh, humility or whatever it might be. And then he would think through, so how am I going to be, have more of that in my life? Now he, he did it from more of a, a, a humanistic kind of approach where he, he, it was all about what he did. Uh, and for a Christian, of course we have the Holy spirit, uh, to do much deeper changes in us. But I do uh, like at least his intentionality that yeah. he would try to look at himself and recognize where he fell short, where he was not the person he thought he ought to be. And then he would make a plan, uh, to, to intentionally develop those areas more. And so I, I would say we, one of the, one of the words I think that is so key to leaders is intentionality. Yeah. They don't just, just take what comes. They, they're, they are thinking ahead to say, well, what kind of person should I be? What kind of things should I be doing? And I think that's why it's, it's typically it's good to have goals. Yeah. Uh, to say, uh, if you don't have any goals for the year that you're entering, uh, then you're going to just drift like a ship without a rudder, just wherever the currents take you, the wherever the wind is blowing. And you want to be more intentional than that. You don't want to just get to the end of the year and say, I just sort of 
made it through this year, yeah. uh, you want to have goals that you are striving for. You want to have destinations you're reaching for. And so um, I think uh, certainly goal setting as well. Do it Now do it prayerfully. Don't do it just like Benjamin Franklin yeah. and leave it all up to what you think about yourself. I'd let the Spirit of God tell you what he thinks about where you're at and where you need to go. Well, I like the uh, the idea of of what Benjamin Franklin did was he, it sounds like he didn't try and tackle everything. Right. Either. Which I think is a key. Uh r- right, if you if you look at a dozen different yeah. character traits you think you could improve on, you're probably not going to improve on any of them. And I think that's where you get the I want to be a little bit better this year than last year. Yeah. That's kind of a nebulous sort of yeah, okay, you're not yeah. going to how do you comp- me- how do you yeah how if do you, you can't measure it you have no way of knowing if you were successful or not right and so I think goals ought to be measurable and so and some of them are can be very very practical uh, for instance uh, you might just decide I need to read more and not just fluff I, I, not just newspapers uh, I need to read some Christian classics this year yeah. and so identify some uh, maybe talk to some people that you respect that are widely read, uh, deeply read, and say, what would you consider to be 10 Christian classic books that every Christian ought to read or 10 leadership books that every leader ought to read and then order them on Amazon, put yeah. them on a stack on your shelf, start reading, say, well, there's if there's 10 books here, I've got 12 months, I need to get one of these read about once a month. Uh, and so which one do I start with? And, yeah. uh, I, I know people that, uh, try to read 50 books or 52 books, a, a book a week. There's even a century club where people try <laughs> to read a hundred books in a year, which, uh, you've got to be very intentional to do that. Exactly. And a very uh, fast reader. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the only danger with that is retaining what right. you're reading, but, right. uh, but setting a, an aggressive stretch goal, uh, the end, but don't just say, I want to read more. You know, don't that's that's yeah. not a good way to measure it. Say, well, I want to read twenty five, I get twenty six books. I'll yeah. give myself two weeks a book. You know, and something that I've started doing. Uh, I, at, at, in in addition to doing this podcast, I love listening to podcasts, and I mm-hmm. and I do a lot of that. And uh, anytime I'm listening to someone who I respect or uh, am interested in, and they have a book recommendation, I've got a running. Uh, list yeah. on Amazon. I'll just I can pull that app up on my phone and just add that book to my my book list on Amazon for future yeah. uh, reading, and that kind of helps me always have something on deck. Yeah. So you know you may finish a book and then it's like, well, now ah, what do I want to read? And you don't really know what's next. Yeah. So having that list in advance can sometimes also be helpful. Yeah. And I I I do that. A lot of times I I'll hear a podcast or something or or some leader will recommend a book or send me a book and. Uh, I've got about two shelves of book uh, in a, on a bookshelf near my desk, just with books on deck. And I start, and I try to spread it out a bit. I've got a lot of biographies I'm trying to read through, but then I'll read. I think you know I'm going to just read this one on apologetics, or I, I haven't read one uh, in this area for a while, just a devotional type uh, book. Yeah. But spread it around some. But uh, but I I visually can see some of those next ones. I know you're a lot of audio books yeah. if you're driving around yeah. and stuff but but I can see that shelf of books on deck and I start thinking okay I'm getting near the end of this book I'm going to take this book with me now the next trip and um but so that's you know the travel is another area I think sometimes travel just does so much I think to inform us and yeah. educate us that uh but again you need to have goals I know that your wife has goals for country she wants to get to when she finds yeah. a great uh, airfare deal yeah uh, our goal is just to find good flights and it, <laughs> wherever the that destination is. isn't uh <laughs> you know it's not as important uh but i think uh certainly measuring as well how we did with last year's goals if we set a bunch of goals last year and then we didn't meet any of them uh I think you need to evaluate that and see well why did not before i start setting goals for next year i better evaluate if if I keep systematically failing to reach every goal I set, then it's probably futile to set a bunch of new goals until I figure out how to set goals and then align my life to actually achieve those goals. You know, I've struggled. uh, I didn't meet my 10 
5K goal that I had set. The big, I think we talked about that a year ago. Yeah, I got sick several times uh, as I am right now, and just uh, it just seems with my travel and a couple of prolonged illnesses, it just really throws me off, it, and uh, I kept losing ground. Those sound a lot like excuses to me. Yeah, well, they I'm are. Sitting, they but, are excuses, uh... and I and I look <laughs> at that and I think. Uh, well, let me reflect on the goal itself. Is it a is it a worthy goal? Uh, I think you and I talked a bit in terms of running about. There's some studies that show just trying to endure running distance isn't always as good as sometimes changing up your speed yeah. and actually sprinting and then jogging. And instead of just trying to endure running a long distance, sometimes it's better to change it up and have your body facing different kinds of, uh, uh, of, you know, strenuous exercise. Yeah. Well, doing, doing a fast one mile, um, not only, you know, you can get faster at running a mile, but then that helps you endure those longer distances. So, and I'm, so I'm looking at that and I'm, I'm trying to, cause I, I still would like to run 10 K at some point, but I, at this point I've got to sort of circle the wagons and make sure I can, nail the 5k here in a consistent way and uh you know i, I want to try to do some things so i stay healthier so i i'm when i'm healthy i'm better at running and uh that means maybe changing some habits when i travel um maybe even i've started to think i've had a cold for so long maybe i need to start wearing some kind of mask when i'm on airplanes <laughs> since i'm on them so often but yeah uh but so i look at some goals i fell short in and then i uh, and then I look forward and say, so what is a realistic goal? And what, what it, it doesn't make any difference what goal you set if you don't uh, make any adjustments in your life to meet it. We, we never right. have a hundred goals, but if your life's not set up to achieve those goals, if you don't keep reviewing them and measuring your progress and have a thousand goals, it doesn't make any yeah, difference. Yeah, wh- what is it? Uh, goals are just dreams with a deadline or yeah. something, something like that? that. That, that could work. Otherwise, yeah. you know, yeah, if they're just wishes and, you know, yeah, I'd like to do this and this, but if you don't have a real plan and I, how to get it done. I think so. And I think, you know, a couple other areas just to mention uh, uh, your service. Uh, I, I think a lot of Christians have some area of service in their church or in a nonprofit or just serving the Lord uh, in their own life uh, day by day. But I would look at my service and say, what was the fruitfulness of uh, my service? Uh, I serve on this board. Uh, I, I serve uh, teaching this class or Bible study at my church. But how how might there be more fruit uh, next year than there was this year? For there to be more fruit, I can wish for there to be more fruit all day long. But I've got to make some adjustments in how I serve. Mm-hmm. I've got to serve at a higher level if I want a higher level of results. Uh, and so what adjustments do I need to make? And then raising up other leaders. Uh, I know a lot of pastors who are not strong leaders and they do way too much themselves and they would complain, well, I've got no one, there's no one in the church willing to serve with me, no one that wants to help. And I would say, well, then you apparently have done a poor job of raising up leaders in your church because you're still the only one doing it year after year. So pastoring the very same way next year, you're probably not going to have any new infusion of leaders in your church than you've ever had because Mm -hmm. you're still pastoring the very same way. So what adjustments do you need to make so that you intentionally spend time with cultivating new leaders? Maybe spending time even with some college students or youth that are long-term development projects and maybe spending time with this, uh, person in, who joined your church recently that shows some real potential but needs to be discipled uh, try what are some practical ways to delegate more give more of your work away intentionally yeah. uh, th- there's some things you can do that will mean you're going to get different results at the end of next year uh, from what you got this year but doing the same thing year in and year out you're going to get the same results year in and year out and we ought to just fundamentally always want next year to be our best year yet. Mm -hmm. And for that, you've got to make adjustments. And I, and I would just say, when you look at the condition of the world today, it's a mess. It it has great need. 
the world needs Christians to be better than they were before. Mm-hmm. They need you to have your best year this coming year. Uh, more fruit, more uh, effectiveness, uh, more glory to God. And for that to happen, you've got to make some adjustments. And so the end of this year is always a good time to just pull aside and say, so what adjustments do I need to make if next year is to be the best year I've ever had yet? What goals do I need to set so I can be very intentional about how I live my life? And and not just goals about I want my company to make more money, I want to get a promotion at the end of the year, uh, but particularly think about who you are. I, one thing I've discovered is people that are not Christians typically just assume, well, that's the way I am. I've always been a short-tempered person. I'm, people just need to know that's how I'll always be. Yeah. But a Christian should not ever say, well, that's just how I, I am, hmm. because we have the power of the Holy Spirit to change who I am. And so I would not look at, I, I'm destined, consigned to always be this person who turns people off because I'm prideful, I'm angry, I'm selfish. But to say, I don't have to keep being that person. And so be aggressive to say, God, this is the person I think you really want me to be. And of course, just hold up a picture of Jesus and you've got your roadmap for who God wants you to be. And to say, and so anywhere I'm not yet like Jesus, uh, you show me. There could be two dozen different characteristics where you're not like Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit, what what specific things uh, this year should I focus on that will make me more like Jesus at the end of the year? And how and help me think how I might measure those things. Mm. And uh, and then when I uh, as I as I'm halfway through the year, let me let me take stock and see what progress I'm making. Do I need to make some more adjustments? I'm I'm behind. Uh, I don't want to get to the end of the year and realize, oh, it was just a New Year's resolution that never meant anything. Yeah, uh, Lord, I'm serious about this. I want to be a better person. And so set goals, uh, not just lose weight, um, not just uh, uh, read a book, but also take a look at Jesus and say, in what ways will I specifically focus my life this year so I am have these traits just like Jesus mm-hmm. by the end of the year? Well, this has been great, and uh, I always like goal setting and, and, and doing these sort of things. And it's hard to believe we've come to the end of another year and uh, we've got 2020 out in front of us. And, uh, you know, it, it can be your best year yet. And we are praying that uh, for all of us. The world the world needs this to be yeah. our best year yet. Not so. just for yourself, but for those around you. Yeah. So happy 2020. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If this is something you enjoyed, it really makes a difference if you leave a review and a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. We always love hearing from our listeners. So email us at podcast at blackv.org.